you so very much for joining us yet again for another Bible study here at MONBC through our online platforms. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and grace toward us. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for keeping us safe. Uh, from all hurt, harm, seen, and unseen danger. Now open up our hearts, our minds, and our souls that we shall receive some wonderful truth that you have just for us. We love you and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To God be the glory. So last week, and I told you uh, uh, actually two weeks ago that we will be talking about uh, the book of Ezra for a, a few weeks uh, only so that, not only, but mainly so that we can really look at how God allowed his people to return back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple after being exiled uh, into Babylon. And so the last two weeks we dealt with Ezra chapter one, which is really opening up uh, uh, the book of Ezra and uh, where they stood and how the Lord granted them uh, basically favor, excuse me, with a Gentile king. Uh, excuse me, King Cyrus uh, made the decree in his first year, go get the job done. Go rebuild the temple uh, and rebuild it so that your God can be praised. We talked about the fact that they had, um, he was tolerant of the gods that the people uh, that he had rule over served. And so we, we dealt with that in the first chapter, actually the first two chapters, uh, all, of the, all of the families that were involved, all of the stuff, all of the, the bullets, the, uh, the cattle, all of the animals and, and, and gold and things of that nature so that they could rebuild. So Ezra keeps going. Uh, the book of Ezra keeps going, the sacrifice is restored, the temple foundation is completed, um, and they're rebuilding the temple, then the foundation is completed. Then in chapter four, there was some opposition to rebuilding the temple. There were some enemies that said, hold up, wait a minute, why are you building this temple? Okay, opposition to rebuilding the city. Artaxerxes replies and says, no, y'all go build the temple. That's what y'all were commanded to do. The rebuilding of the temple resumes in chapter five. And then in chapter five, Lord have mercy. I, and I said this Sunday, you always gonna have some haters, good gracious and life. So in chapter five of Ezra, uh, at the beginning, it, you know, they were rebuilding the temple. Uh, they were just getting back into it after having to stop, um, you know, after it had been delayed by local opposition and regional authorities. And this is two years after the exiles return, reconstruction began, and then, you know, they had to keep stopping. And so uh, verse number three of Ezra chapter five, says, at that time, Tatanai, the governor, and let me make sure I'm pronouncing his name correct. I believe that's right. Yeah, Tatanai or Tatanai. Tatanai, uh, the governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Shethavosni, and their colleagues came to the Jews and asked, who gave you the order to rebuild this temple and finish this structure. They wanted to know, who gave y'all permission to do this? Who who told y'all y'all can rebuild this temple? I, I just want to know, who told y'all y'all can do this, okay? Uh, tell, me, tell me who it was. I can tell you if you keep rebuilding or not. And they also asked them, what are the names of the workers who are constructing this building? Not only do we know want to know who gave you permission, but we also want to know what your name is. You know, uh, working as a public servant, um, we were dealing with an, an issue one time and and uh, the, the person was, you know, getting a little, uh, you know, irritated, to say the least, getting a little irritated. And so after he said what he said, he asked my coworker the question. He said, 
Um, you know, da 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 da. And, and, and what is your name? I I, I want to know your name, basically because the you know now that I have your name. I can I can call back and I can complain and I can say what well, such and such said that I couldn't do such and such and I just want to see if that was exactly right da 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 and and so that's why you know they wanted to know the names because if they had the names then they could take it back to the king and said well uh, Malcolm and Alexander and Jeremy and all and, and these the people that are working on it. And did you all, did you get their permission to work on it? They said that you gave that such and such said that you gave them permission to do such and such and such, such. They were just trying to get somebody in trouble. They were they, they were trying to have the upper hand, if you would. So they wanted to know the names of the the people, the workers that were rebuilding the temple. Verse number five, but God was watching over the Jewish elders. These men wouldn't stop them until a report was sent to Darius so that they could receive written instruction about this matter. Notice what they did. They said, look, I understand what you're asking. I understand you may not agree with it, but we have given, been given specific instruction, not only by God, but by the king himself to continue doing this work. That, that should speak something to us as we keep uh, studying it. That should speak something to us about staying faithful to the task at hand, despite the opposition that comes, despite what folks may say to you, no, I got to keep on standing on the word of God. I'm going to keep going even if folks don't agree with me, even if folks don't like it. I've got to keep doing what God has called me to do. Man, ooh, that's good to know right there. I've got to keep pushing. I've got to keep going, okay? So, Tatanai and Shethabozni, they said, oh, okay. <laughs> we're going to write a letter ourselves. And we're going to ask the king ourselves. And so they decided, verse number uh, 7 through verse number 16, uh, gives the actual letter that they wrote. And then verse 17 is where I want to pick up. Ezra chapter 5, verse number 17. So if it pleases the king, let a search of the royal archives in Babylon be conducted to see if it is true that a decree was issued by King Cyrus to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the king's decision regarding this matter be sent to us. Basically, what they said is, we're going to write a letter to the king, and we're going to ask the king to give us a reply. And if the king says that you got to stop building, you got to stop building. And that's because it came from the king. As Olivia would say, nah, 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 boo, boo. I, nah, 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 nah. You, you, you ain't about to play us like that. I'm the governor. I'm a, a, another ruler. And you going to you gonna keep working even though I'm asking you who gave you permission to do what you are doing right now? I need some, I need some written documentation. I need to see it for myself that you have the authority and the power to do what you're doing. Now, I, they had every right to do that because if you remember, uh, when we go over to the New Testament, y'all remember Paul, before he was Paul or before his name was changed, he was Saul, and he had, when he was on the way to Damascus, he had a written letter from the king. Because if the letter was written from the king, that was gold. That was, that was a done deal. The king said, the king wrote it down. That's why the word of God, oh man, let, 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 before I keep talking about Saul, that's why the word of God written is so important. Because once you write it down, it's done. It, oh, it's written down. Oh, okay. You you, you can't change the story. You know, I tell you, I love law and order. So look at that law and order, what they do. And even Blue Bloods and, and uh, shows of that nature, what they do is once the perp confesses, once the person confesses, what they do, they say, okay, now take what you, uh, now take 
what you said, what you told us verbally, and we want you to write it down. Write your statement. Because once you write your statement, that's why it's so important. That's why you see those shows, they say, no, you know, it can't be under coercion. It can't be under stress. They have to voluntarily write their statement down because once that statement is taken to uh, the, the, the court and it's presented before the court, the court says, well, it's written down. Right, that, there's a proof right there that that's what you said, that's what you confessed to, and it's written down, and you cannot go back on it now. And so, I, so I, I go back to Saul in the New Testament because when he was on his way to Damascus, he was on his way to kill folks. But the reason why he was on his way to kill folks, why he thought he had permission, is because the king had given him a written letter that said, You have permission to take into captivity or kill those that confess Christianity. Oh, my goodness. And so that's why the word of God written down is so important because once I read it, I can take that to the bank. I can take, I can take it to, that's the proof. The proof is in the pudding. It was written down. So when people talking about, oh, it's just another story. That didn't really happen. How could that have happened? It just made up. No, 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 no. It was written down. And somebody wrote it down. And, and I believe it because it was written down. It's the, it's the gospel truth. Because it was written down and I could go back and I could re-read it. That's why education is so important. Because once I can read a thing, uh, man, you, you can't take it from me because I, not only am I held accountable to it, but well, that, that's what it said. That's why contracts are so important. When you get ready to read a contract, you better make sure you read what you're about to sign. Come on here now. Don't be just signing stuff. You better read what you're about to sign because you could be signing any old thing and then not realize, oh, well, you signed it, but I didn't know it said that. Well, that's your fault. You didn't read it. That, that, that's your fault. You didn't know what it said. And so they said, if it's written down from the king that y'all can't keep rebuilding, eh, eh, nah, 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 boo -boo. we got something on y'all. So they sent the letter to Darius. I'm so glad Darius was a, you know, was an all right dude. Because, and, and so now, as we get into more content, let me give you a little bit more content before we start reading chapter six. Uh, the decree of Persian King Darius the first is what we're going to uh, start talking about tonight. He came to power after se several years of internal strife. He strengthened the Persian government, established a new method of taxation, and further organized the empire. Okay, the decree continued the policy that was established by Cyrus. Okay, this is the response to those that said or questioned Zerubbabel and the local leaders concerning who gave them the right to rebuild. Okay, so verse number one, Ezra chapter six. King Darius gave the order and they searched in the library of Babylon in the archives. Why? Because in the letter, it said, let us, what, in verse number 17 that we just read of chapter 5, if it pleases the king, okay? They said that Cyrus told them to do this, okay? So if it pleases you, king, you now the king. Cyrus said the king no more. Cyrus go. You the king now. And so if it's all right with you, what we think should happen is you need to go back and look in the you you need to go look in the bylaws. You need to go look back in the documents and see. Is that what King Cyrus told them to do? So go, go back to Babylon, look at the royal archives, and let's see what happened. But what King Darius said was. Not only the, uh, in the library of Babylon, in the archives. However, not all official records were stored in Babylon. Other cities held uh, local and national records and uh, treasures. Okay, Therefore, a search for uh, Cyrus's records 
would extend outside the capital of Babylon, which we're about to find out in verse number two. But it was in the fortress of Ekbatana, and the King James Version says found at Akamita, Akamita, uh, in the province of Media, that a scroll was found with this record written on it. Okay? Uh, the city served uh, as the summer palace for Persian royalty, so it is possible that Cyrus issued his decree there during the summer of 538 BC. Okay? So they searched. Well, the king said, okay, I ain't got no problem with searching. Ain't got no problem with finding the written documentation. You know, I, 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 I want to see too. Is this what King Cyrus said? And so they started searching and they found the written document, the record that was written on it. This, this is the scroll that contains what the uh, those that were rebuilding the temple, what they said, King Cyrus said and wrote down. Okay, now we're about to get to the proof. Verse number three. In the first year of King Cyrus, as he issued, in the first year of King Cyrus, he issued a decree concerning the house of God in Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt as a place for offering sacrifices and let its original foundations be retained. Its height is to be 90 feet and its width 90 feet with three layers of cut stones and one of timber. The cost is to be paid from the royal treasury. The gold and silver articles of God's house that Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and carried to Babylon must also be returned. They are to be brought to the temple in Jerusalem where they belong and put into the house of God. Okay? Yeah. That's what was written down. There's proof. There's a written record. I can take I, I can take it to court. Because that's what's written down. Okay? The, the key detail of their return was the reconstruction of the house of God in Jerusalem. Not just to be returning, to be returning. Their key purpose in returning was to rebuild the temple of God. Okay? This particular passage gives us further or expands further on the directive given to us that we talked about the last two weeks that Cyrus said in Ezra chapter 1. Okay? Uh, uh, three score cubits, breadth, uh, excuse me, uh, 90 feet uh, in height, 90 feet in width, three layers of cut stone, and one of uh, timber, okay? Now, remember, the foundation had already been, or the, the foundation or the altar uh, had already been reconstructed in Ezra chapter 3. Now, it was time to provide the space for worship. Okay, uh, 90 feet each way, three dimensions, uh, these dimensions differ from those of Solomon's temple. Um, yeah, archaeological discoveries in modern day Syria have shown that the use of timber at the several rows, timber, yeah, at the several rows of stones help buildings survive earthquakes. This is crazy to me. Even back then, in the Bible, that's why I, I preached a message one time and I was talking about the fact that when you think about education as we see it today, everything that a child needs to be educated on, the basics of education, math, science, reading, and uh, history, Everything you need is in the Bible. Everything. Three score, 60. Okay? Yeah, you know, 90 by 90. That, that's, that's, that's math and science all at the same time. Reading and history. Okay? Uh, you know, art 
is is foul. You know how great thou art. You know the the, the art of God. Your know, God can you know uh, do beautiful masterpieces and things of that nature. Music is found in the Bible. Uh, uh, you know, PE is found in the Bible. Physical education. Uh, you know, talking about you know uh, good health and then uh, Paul talked a lot about uh, runners, so track and sports and things like that. Everything we need, we can find it in the Bible. You can teach a child straight from the Bible, and they learn everything they need to learn straight from the Bible. But my point to this is that notice that archaeological discoveries showed showed that. Uh, showed, sorry, showed that even then that what they built stuff with was done for a purpose and a reason, not just to look good, but so that it could withstand, you know, climate change. Come on here, somebody. They did it on purpose so that it could survive earthquakes, all right? So that it could survive, uh, you know, natural phenomena such as earthquakes and thunderstorms and things of that nature. It's right here in the book, y'all. All we got to do is go right back and read the Bible. Praise the Lord. Have Notice what King Cyrus said. We talked about it in the last two weeks. He said you're going to pay for it from the royal treasury. That's how it's going to be paid, okay? These funds came to the treasury via via new taxation practices. The gold and silver articles that was at God's house that Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple of Jerusalem, verse number five, carried to Babylon, must also be returned. Why is that so important? Because Cyrus said, I didn't want them for myself, but it originally belonged to the God of their people, okay? Nebuchadnezzar confiscated them, took them to Babylon, following the de destruction of Judah and Jerusalem. Why? And they were supposed to be brought back to the temple of Jerusalem, where they belong, and put into the house of God. These vessels had been used in unholy ways during the exile. Now, they would need to be reconsecrated before they are used in the temple. The restorative act required sacred anointed oil. The presence of these items in the newly restored temple represented the restoration of Israelite life as the holy people of God. It was more than just putting stuff in there. No, this stuff has to remain sacred. And so in it remaining sacred, we need to make sure we anointed with oil, we uh, we reconsecrate these things, we restore these things back to their holy practices, and then we're going to, it's going to be a symbol not only for uh, the physical representation, but a symbol for the spiritual restoration of the Israelite life as holy people of God. That they're going, now this is a physical representation, a physical sign to you that God wants to bring you back into holiness with him. That's why fasting becomes so important because fasting says, I have now reconsecrated myself so that I can not only do for God more, but I can also hear from God much better. So this is the decree. This was the letter. They found it. Y'all the ones asked for it. So now, notice what uh, Darius does. He said, y'all asked for this. Y'all the one wrote me the letter. I didn't call for y'all. I didn't see it for y'all. Y'all asked me, so we did it. We found it. So don't, don't, don't hate the truth when you find out the truth. Because now I'm about to deal with y'all. Verse number six, Ezra chapter six, says, therefore... Therefore, based on what we just read, based on what I just said, based on what was written by King Silas, who was before me, now, therefore, you must stay away from that place 
Tap thy governor of the region west of the Euphrates River, Shephar Bozdai, and your colleagues, the officials in the region. Y'all stay back. Don't y'all go over there. Don't y'all mess with them. Don't y'all ask them no more questions. Don't y'all be talking about so who gave y'all authority. Ain't nobody asked you because y'all ain't got nothing to do with it. No, I stay away from it and don't you do nothing else. Point blank period. Don't you do that there. You stay away from them. Because y'all, y'all the ones asked, was it written down? Yes, it was written down. That's what King Cyrus said. So he said, there he said, let me give y'all specific instructions. Let me talk directly to y'all and say, look, don't, uh -uh, don't go back over there. Y'all leave alone now. Leave them alone. Okay? And don't mess with them. Isn't it good to know that God says to our enemy to leave us alone? He, he, he specifically speaks to some of our enemies and say, uh-uh, leave them alone. Uh-uh, yeah. And if I tell y'all go over there, uh, but but since you did ask, okay, let me tell you who they are. Let me tell you what I have called it for them to do. Let, let me show it to you. I can show it to you better than I can tell you. Come on here, somebody. And so he said, that I'm talking directly to y'all now because y'all were asked for it. Don't leave them alone. Verse number seven, leave the construction of the house of God alone. Let the governor and elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its original site. The governor coordinated local affairs with the Persian authorities. Another group of localized leadership consisted of the elders of the Jews. They were leaders who had the local affairs like family disputes or village conflicts. We talked about that before. We were talking about the instructions that were given in Deuteronomy that the judges were responsible for the final verdict, but then the other officials were responsible for like the day-to-day -day stuff. And I compared that for, the, for my best understanding to like DAs or assistant DA. They do the work but it's the, you know, the, the DA that has the ultimate responsibility at the end of the day. So he's a leader that has to go along there, okay? The division allowed the leaders to respond to the internal challenges of the community and maintain relationships with, good relationships with the Persians. Additionally, it allowed the Persians to maintain control over the satrapy or set yeah, satrapy without overt concern in other local matters. Okay? So he said, lead that lead him, lead him alone, Tat Nine and Shethar, Shethar Bozda, lead him alone, and lead the house of God alone too. Now ain't nobody asked for your opinion or what you thought about the matter. Ain't got nothing to do with you. It, this is none of your concern. But I more over. Verse number eight, I hereby issue a decree concerning what you are to do so that the elders of the Jews can rebuild the house of God. I furthering instructed you so that you can help them do what they need to do. The cost is to be paid in full to these men out of the royal revenues from the taxes of the region west of the Euphrates River so that the work will not stop. Region west of the Euphrates River. Who was the governor of the region west of the Euphrates River? Tap not. <laughs> Why is that funny to me? Because you were the same one that was asking the question about who gave y'all the authority and now the king is saying, since you want to ask the question, Everybody in your region, they got a new tax, and that tax is going to go to the Jews so they could continue rebuilding what they need to rebuild. Cut gracious of life. The wealth of the... Oh, my gosh. Lord, have mercy. Let, 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 let me go to the scripture right quick. Lord, have mercy. It, it, it is in uh, Proverbs. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Proverbs. Yes, sir. Proverbs 13, 22. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all y'all turn to Proverbs 13, 22 right quickly. And then we're going to fit. Oh, man. And then I'm going to be out of time. Lord have mercy. 
Proverbs, that, and I'm going to stop right there in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 22. Y'all remember I mentioned this last week. I want you to read it for yourself. Come on here now. Oh, Jesus. I, and I'm going to read verse number 20 first. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 20. Excuse me. Verse number 20, Proverbs chapter 13. The one who walks with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. Disaster pursues sinners, but good rewards the righteous. Verse number 22. A good man, come on here now, leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. King James Version said to his children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. That, and, 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 you know, I, I want to get to the second part of verse number 22, but I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't explain that inheritance is not just land and money, but an inheritance also has to do with a person's name, their legacy. There are so many of us, oh man, and I ain't got time to go into this now because I'm actually out of time, but there are so many of us that were so busy trying to honor a, the legend of our lives, or, you know, that came before a legend. Oh, he was a legend. She was a legend. We're so busy trying to honor the legend that we forget to honor their legacy. Woo! Good gracious of life. We're so busy trying to honor the legend, the person themselves, that we forget to honor the legacy that they left behind, that we're supposed to continue carrying. That's why you know, a wise man or a good man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren, not just money, but he leaves a good name to his grandchildren, that his grandchildren can, can carry out the legacy, the inheritance, uh, of what they taught them, especially a spiritual inheritance. Come on here now. The second part of verse number 21, which uh, 22, which is why I brought this up. But the sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. It's in the book, y'all. The sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. That sinner cannot it, the, the sinner cannot reap all of the benefits of the wealth that they have because it ain't all for them. Oh, Lord. So, uh, so Derry said, okay, I got something for you, Tech Knight, governor of the region west of the Euphrates River. Since you the one inquired about what gave them permission to rebuild this temple, I'm about to tax your people and the taxes that come from your people, you going to give it to the Jews. Y'all may be sinners, but it's stored up for what? Y'all are done. I'm out of time. Lord, we got to go, y'all. I pray y'all got some. Y'all did. I, God knows I did. Good, Google it to the level. Good to me. I pray you join us next Wednesday if the Lord should say the same. Last Wednesday of March. Good gracious of life. Can y'all believe it? We're already at the end of March already. But I pray you'll join us next week. We're going to pick right back up in Ezra chapter 6 and then uh, move a little bit further as we continue to talk about it, to continue talking about, excuse me, this liberating Passover. This coming Sunday morning, fourth Sunday of March, I pray you'll be able to join us at 10.45 a.m. Uh, as we continue to worship the Lord together virtually online. Amen to God be the glory. Continue to be very prayerful during this Lenten season about where the Lord, I said it Sunday, I said it again tonight, specifically where the Lord has brought you from in the last two years. What has the Lord done in your life? We thank uh, the Lord for all that he has done in our lives. Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray. God, we thank you so very much for your word. Thank you for allowing us to study it on this evening. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you are hiding in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Lord, I continuously pray for our brothers and sisters 
in uh, Ukraine, and even our brothers and sisters in uh, Russia, God. Lord, their leader may be bad, but there's some folks in Russia that actually are good. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to keep them safe, continue to touch the heart of Vladimir Putin, God. Lord, continue to touch the heart of all of our leaders. I pray, God, as the, the hearings continue and the, the confirmation hearings continue for uh, the next, hopefully next, Supreme Court Justice uh, Brown Jackson, I pray, Lord, that you will continue to stand by her as she has pronounced, announced her faith publicly, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to keep her, Lord, keep her uh, in the palm of your hands. God, we love you and adore you. We magnify you and we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Got every single thing done. And all those that believe said, Amen. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try to cut you bear so good you be so good you be so good to me